started out fishing with my dad. He got me started at a very young age and took me fishing. Uh, it was kind of a treat. I always think of kind of late afternoons where he would, he we would be working in the yard or something and he'd be kind of like, hey, let's cut out early and go fishing. And it was always super fun. And we would go up to this little lake, you know, we would probably buy 100 crickets or 50 crickets going up to the, to the lake. And we would, you know, get the crickets out, put it on the hook, catch fish. And in this particular trip, we were catching fish left and right and actually running out of crickets. But as we we're heading back to the dock, I could hear crickets in the boat, aluminum John boat, you know, get up underneath the, the deal. So I'm down on the floor, I'm sticking my finger, getting all these crickets to, to come out of the, all the nooks and crannies, catching them. And every time I caught one, I caught a fish, you know, and, and to this day, that's probably one of my fondest fishing memories that I've, that I've ever had. My mom and my dad split up at a very young age, and I'd see my dad on the weekends, and that's where I really started fishing, you know. My first experience was with him in farm ponds. As I got a little bit older, my grandfather would take us camping once a year, and he didn't know nothing about fishing, but he sure did enjoy trying to teach us, and we'd catch bluegill and use grasshoppers. I would get with my friends, and we would go and spend the weekends and catch great big fish, and that sealed the deal for me and it made me an angler for life. I really never thought about turning pro. My dad came to me and he had went to a professional event with a friend of mine. And he came back and he told me, he said, you really ought to try this. I think that you would like it and I think you can do really well. At that point, I wasn't very sure that I wanted to go out and fish against the people that I had been watching on television and idolizing for the last 15 years. But I did, with his help and my wife being very, very supportive. She's the one that told me that not very many people get the opportunity to live their dream. And here it is 12 years later. I hired on with the City of Carbondale Fire Department. And I was building a very good career, enjoyed what I was doing, I was helping others. As my professional career developed and my fan base developed, I realized that I was very, very fortunate to be able to do what I'm doing for a living and to respect conservation, to promote conservation practices, and to help teach the younger anglers coming up to leave things in a better condition than you found them, why that is important. It's been very rewarding going forward. We do a kid's show with our own children every year. You can look back and see how the kids have grown. And generally in those shows, we do some tips about how a parent can teach their child how to fish or how a parent can find opportunities. I mean, you've got people that live in cities, you've got people that live in places where, where water's not immediately available to them. So there are programs out there that can you know, get their kids out there, whether it's a small farm pond that's stocked or a city you know, uh, park that has fish in there and that you're, you're able to go there. There are different programs that, that teach kids how to fish and give them the opportunities. In this day and age with cell phones and iPods and iPads and video games and everything else, kids don't have the motivation to get outside like they, they used to. And I think that it's also maybe more challenging for parents to get the kids outside. And I think fishing is, is the ultimate way to do it because they're outside, they're doing something cool, there's a reward. You're, you're catching something cool, and, uh, and you know, I, I think that's the, the ultimate way to spend time with, with the people you love, honestly, is, is through fishing. Just from the entire experience, uh, it's, it, it's caused me to live the moment. I try not to get too tied up on what could have been, because there's a lot more really unique experiences down the road just to, around the next point, or uh, turn or on the next cast. You lose the big one because of something you did wrong. You didn't tie a knot. You didn't pay attention to your rigging. You didn't do what you were supposed to do and, and here comes the big opportunity and, and you lose it. Yeah, that's what develops passion in, in the sport. That's what develops passion in anything that you do. It's really not the big successes that you have. I, I think it's sometimes it's the failures you know, that make you think, God, if I just tied that knot a little bit better, if I had just known how to do this, I could have could have caught that big fish. I think you're learning life lessons every time you go. In hindsight, now as a father myself, looking back on that time that, that I spent with my dad, you know, really what I, what I know is that it really wasn't about
catching the fish or losing the fish. It was really about the time that I got to spend with my dad. We got to, you know, talk about a lot of, a lot of things that are that are really important. And and uh, sometimes it takes you 40 years to realize that kind of stuff. But they're life lessons every time you go. If I had to tell my dad one thing about, you know, fishing, really just thank you. You know, thank you for spending the time with me. Thank you for doing the things that you did to to create time in, in his schedule so that he could go fishing and have that have that kind of time. I look back on a lot of things in my life and with, with a lot of great amount of gratitude, but my father spending time with me, taking me fishing, that's probably